Hey, what is going on guys, and welcome to our very first signal processing tutorial. Over the next playlist of videos, we're going to go through some questions which are likely to be asked in a typical signal processing course. We're going to work through them step by step, so hopefully by the end of it you have a good understanding of how to do most of the questions, as well as an understanding of the material behind it. In today's video, we're going to tackle an ideal op-amp. Before we get started, there's a little bit of background information which you should know. The first is KCL, which is a law that states that the sum of currents entering a node should equal the sum of currents leaving a node. In our example case up here, I1, which is the current entering the node, equals I2 plus I3 and I4 as they are all leaving. The second is Ohm's law, which simply relates the current which is travelling through a component equal to the voltage drop over that component divided by the resistance of the component. Let's start by doing a KCL at node A. We have I1 equals I2 plus I3 plus I4. We can simplify this somewhat as we know the current going into the op-amp thanks to our op-amp properties up the top here. So we can cancel I3. Since we have V plus equals V minus due to the ideal op-amp, the voltage at node A is zero volts. Therefore, the voltage on both sides of resistor R3 are zero volts. Therefore, there can be no current traveling through the resistor and I4 is simply zero. That leaves us with I1 equals I2. Let's find an equation for I1 using Ohm's law. Remember, we're trying to find V out divided by V in. So we need to find a way to relate those two voltages to one another, and currently we only have currents. So I1 can be given by the voltage V in, subtract the voltage at node A, which we know is zero volts. In other words, the voltage drop over the component R1 divided by the resistance R1, as that is the component that the current travels through. We can do the same for I2. As the current starts at node A, we have 0 volts subtract the voltage at V out, divided by the resistance it travelled through R2. Okay, so we now have two equations for I1 and I2. Let's now set those equal to one another and solve for V out divided by V in. We have I1, which is simply VI divided by R1. We can omit the 0 divided by R1, since that is simply 0, equals the 0 we can drop again, minus VO divided by R2. Now, let's remove those denominators by multiplying through by R1, R2. That gives us VI, the R1's cancel, and we're left with R2, equals negative VO, the R2's cancel, and we're left with R1. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer now. Let's see if we can find VO divided by VI. We can divide through by negative R1 to remove that negative and R1 from the VO. This gives us R2 divided by negative R1 times VI equals V out. Then we can divide through by VI, and we've got ourselves our final equation. VO divided by VI equals negative R2 divided by R1. Okay, so we found our gain for our equation, but what does this mean for our system? The output of our signal is our input signal scaled by R2 divided by R1 and then inverted thanks to the negative. So if we picked values for R2 and R1, for instance 2 kilo ohms for R2 and 1 kilo ohms for R1, we'd be simply left with negative 2 VI equals V out. Therefore, the output signal is the original input signal multiplied by 2 and then inverted thanks to the negative. Now this can be seen best in a demonstration, so let's do that now. Okay, here we can see that the yellow signal is our input signal as it has a magnitude of 1. Everywhere there is a maximum on the input signal, there is a minimum on the output signal. This is expected thanks to the negative which inverts our signal. Secondly, everywhere the amplitude is 1 for the input signal, the output signal has an amplitude of 2. This is due to the ratio of our chosen resistors. Okay, so you might be thinking, how are we amplifying a signal with only resistors and an op-amp, considering the op-amp doesn't appear to take in any extra voltage? Well, that's not entirely the case. The op-amp also has an external power, VCC, and a ground, 
which it uses to amplify the signal. Thanks for watching guys. If this video was a little bit basic, that's okay. Uh, this should have just been a little bit of background information before we move forward. I really want to make sure that we get all of the groundwork down before we move on to a bit harder questions. If you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. I'll see you guys in the next one.